First we talk uh, about unresting mild social norms. Then we talk about norm-based intervention, so disclosure of information about uh, descriptive, descriptive condition and prescriptive condition, the expressive function of the law, and we conclude with some remarks. Let me just say that uh, people's behavior is usually shaped by intrinsic motivation, uh, basically uh, their intrinsic preferences. Um, the extrinsic incentives, so we think of, of it as being monetary incentives, but it could also be other things like the law, uh, for example, jail is an incentive. And finally, the social pressure and social norms, the other stigma that you get from participating in some activities, and I don't have to motivate to you that social pressure is actually very important. And by and large, we economists have emphasized one particular thing, which is incentives. Um, where sociologists and psychologists have basically um, emphasized a different path to compliance. For example, norms-based intervention try to change the norm before changing incentives. And legal scholars, and I'm simplifying a lot here, legal scholars tend to uh, be somewhere in between. They recognize that uh, law and incentives are part of the things that motivate people, but uh, laws are also more than a price. They're also uh, change and, and convey the value of society. So we need to model all those together to have a single framework, and that's what we are trying to do in, the, in this paper. Um, let me just first talk about non-based interventions, which I would interpret as an economist as a direct disclosure of, of information. The other thing I'm going to talk about uh, beside non-based intervention is the expressive content of the law. Um, which is some kind of indirect disclosure of information by the way I'm going to interpret it. And um, there's a large literature, informal literature in law, which says that laws are the dual role. Uh, they are not just prices for good and bad behavior, which is the way we economists tend to think about the law. We give a price, a positive or negative price, but we give a price for behavior and we try to, to correct it in this way. But also they have, they have an effect in terms of expressing a society's value. Uh, so, for example, when, when we talk about the death penalty, we tend to think of the body as expressing society's value. And we talk a little bit about cost-benefit analysis, does it have an impact and so on, but mainly we talk about the value which are conveyed about our society. Um, and the, the theme, of course, is that if you try to express the value of the society, you just cannot understand through a cost-benefit analysis, in general, the laws may choose inefficient solution. Uh, expressive law is used uh, in, in, in many ways, and actually sometimes it's used to argue in favor of harsher laws. Uh, for example, prison. You know, some people say we have to put those people in jail. Not, not, don't listen to the economists who want, who want some uh, fine, some uh, community service which is more efficient from an economic point of view. And conversely, some people will say we should have a gentler hand, uh, we should not uh, use sanctions which are cheap from an economic point of view. Um, <coughs> corporal punishment, torture, public shaming, or death penalty. So you see that the same argument is used in different ways, in opposite ways, and that's something probably you would like to understand. But the, the main question we want to ask is when does the fact that more people behave well increase or decrease the pressure, social pressure, and then we can also uh, talk about more pressure. Um, to do so. So are there norms in a sense? If you behave in certain ways, do I want to behave in the same way? Um, how is it affected by incentives? How do norms-based intervention and expressive function of the law affect social societal values? And at the end, we discuss a little bit some question, which of course is of interest to economists, which is how can we rationalize the common resistance to the economist's positive and normative messages about incentives and markets? Because it's, you know, any economist who have gone into the policy world or just talk to family and friends know that the economic's message is not always easy to get through. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? So uh, I'm not going to give you a clear answer, but I will give you some insights on it.